All right, we are finally back on the Robotech build. And, um, yeah, I know it's been a while, but, you know, reasons. We're ready for step 43. Remember last time I said we're going to skip step 42 because that's just going to be really tedious, time-consuming, pain in the butt, and I really don't feel like doing that now. So we're skipping ahead to step 43. Now, the um, back parts here. I have those together, and primered, and just some flat black. Actually, it's satin black in those areas. At some point, I'll just kind of go over those with maybe some metallic details or something, maybe. Um, this is just primered. could probably be smoothed out a little bit more. You can kind of see, you know, the non-roundness, like the flats of the uh, from the print. I might make that better. I don't know. It doesn't really bother me that much. And the other parts, again, just in primer. This is kind of the first round of sanding and priming. So this needs more work for sure. So that needs sanded down again, filled and primed and sanded again. Um, but these just, you know, they just go together like this is all. So um, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. And that just, you know, slides in and out like that. Now, I think last week, I mentioned um, putting like a uh, laser pointer thing coming out of the point there. So uh, you can actually fire it and have like a little laser pointer come out. I have this old module from like one of those cameras that has like, um, you know, three clicks where it's like normal flashlight, UV light, and then a laser dot in the middle. So I have this. I think I have another one somewhere. So, you know, maybe something like that just to get the laser dot in there, maybe. Um, I don't know. We'll just see how that goes. I don't know if I'll do that or not. If I add a laser pointer thing in there, um, I'll need to figure out a way to not only turn it on, but to change the batteries. And my thought was where, let's say you pull that all the way out would turn it on, and then you push it in to turn it off. And to change batteries, I thought about Cutting this in a shape, like, because you notice there's like a ledge here. There's like a ledge that locks it in. If I go in here and say I cut out something like this. Well, that wasn't really even, but you get the idea. Cut out something like that. And then come in here and cut out a section like that on each side. Then that would allow me to rotate it, pull it out, change the batteries, put it in, rotate it, it's locked in place. So that's what I'm thinking now. Don't know if I'll really do that or not, but that sounds like a problem for future me. So that's off to the side for now. Uh, next up we have the gear leg and uh, the nose gear leg and nose wheels. We've got the back door here that has been primered. Uh, that needs a little bit more work. We have the gear leg itself. This has gone through one round of filling and priming. It needs a lot more work. And this will end up being painted gloss white with a chrome shock here and a few little picked out details. And that goes in here like that. I'll have to file and sand to get that to fit, but that goes like that. Um, this is just like I did for the main gear legs in a few videos past. Again, it's printed in two parts, like top and bottom, or left and right half. You can see the seam line here where I glued it together. So printed in two parts, put it together. And we also have the wheels. Here are the wheels. I uh, just got this primered so far. Uh, that'll need gloss white. And the axle. So the axle just goes through here. It's a little bit tight now. It needs... Needs a little bit of uh, filing and sanding. So the axle goes through there, and then of course the axle goes into the wheels, and they're tight, they'll need fix. And the tires, just like the mains, I printed the tires out of uh, Ninja Flex, kind of a closer view of it. Um, it came out okay, a few little hairies sticking in there. Um, and I haven't even tried fitting these on here yet, but, uh, well, are they gonna fit? Man, those are tight. They will fit if I force it, but I think what I will do 
is sand the edge of the tire down just a little bit because I don't want to have to force that too much, but um, you get the idea. Wheels, tires, nose gear, door. These just need more sanding, filling, and painting, and those will be done. Which then leads us up to the cockpit. The cockpit. I'm going very minimalistic on the cockpit. These are the seats. I looked at photos of the real, well, the real thing, uh, the real cartoon. I looked at photos of the real cartoon to see that um, those get painted in that uh, dark green. Actually, I have it's called army green or military green, I think, military green. And I tried to dry brush the top with just a little bit of a lighter shade, just so it wasn't so dark and flat. Um, didn't really show up very well. But uh, those are the seats. There's the back rest that goes back there. And then two of these instrument panels. And again, I'm just going very minimalistic here. Uh, painted the uh, displays there, um, kind of a dark green, kind of to simulate uh, trying to uh, to simulate the displays when they're turned off. It's probably a little greener than it should have been, but I think it's okay. Now, most photos I've looked at, the side displays were more triangular shaped. Um, I didn't realize that till after I painted it, but I did see one photo uh, where they were square on all three. So, you know, maybe this is just a different avionics package than the normal one. I don't know. And we got a little screen for the, uh, for the heads up. I'm assuming that's a heads up, the little red circle there. Now that's another thing. Looking at reference photos, that was red, like a red lens. And I'm assuming this is like what I'm familiar with. Um, I, I work on corporate jets as my real job. Actually, I, I used to work on them, now I teach them. Um, but on the aircraft that I work, the HUD uses a, a partially reflective screen right in front of the pilot's face. And the projector is overhead, right over top of his head, pointing forward at the screen. And uh, I'm assuming this is the same thing. Um, and I just put a silver stripe on the edge of it just to kind of highlight it and simulate a frame or something. Um, now, fun fact, on the planes that I work on, here's the other one, on the planes that I, well, on the planes that I teach, the partially reflect reflective lens here, where you see the heads up, that lens is called a holographic optical element. And everything aviation related has an acronym. So you might already, you might already be ahead of me. The acronym, what do you think the acronym is for holographic optical element? H-O-E. Yeah, that's called a HO. Um, now, well, you know what? I noticed there's a little smudge on there. Hold on. Hold on. Let me clean that smudge off. There you go. Because nobody likes a dirty hoe. <laughs> All right, so now the rest of this, again, I'm going very, very minimalistic. Now, I added the hand grip here. I'm assuming that's aileron and elevator control because there's no control yoke anywhere else. So I'm assuming that's uh, aileron and elevator control. Uh, that was not part of the print. I added that after the fact. I modeled it from the plastic model kit. And all they had was that little bump there, so I just modeled it just like that. I didn't think about adding that until, like, yesterday. Um, that was just carved out of a piece of styrene and just glued in place. All of the details here are just left over from another model kit that I did a while ago. They're actually the wrong scale. But, you know, I don't think it looks too terrible. Um, so that goes on, and then you got the seat. Like that. Then you got the other one, and then the other seat, like that, and then this piece goes behind it, like that. I might do more detailing, I might do more, um, I might put more little switches and dots for lights, and maybe, I don't know. Again, I'm not getting too carried away with the details of this. The canopy is going to be closed. Um, again, I'm just going for a very minimalistic detail here, but all that stuff needs to get glued in place just like that. Uh, next up, step 46. I haven't done a whole lot with this yet. I got these parts here. I still need to remove all of the support material out of that one, but that's what it looks like with the support material removed. Those will go together this way. Obviously, I have not done any filling or sanding or anything here yet. And those parts... I changed, did I? 
Yeah. No. Maybe. Yeah. I changed these a little bit from the kit. Um, so you will print two, like you'll, you'll print two of each of these. And those get bonded together like this. And so then you end up with two of those. This one's already together. And then those go together this way. Now on the kit, on the model kit, one of these has a post on it, the other one has the hole. Uh, to make it easier to print, I just did two pieces like this, right? Two pieces like that that get bonded together to form a single pin. And so this will go in here like that. It's too tight to fit in now. That needs sanded down. And then that will hold, you know, through that one, that will hold those two together this way. I don't know why I printed two sets of those. I really only needed the one. So you only need one of those. So those go together like this. And then those fit in. Those will fit in like that. But you'll need those bushings, uh, letter D, right in there, to go around here. And then the legs will attach here. So those will go into the bushings of the legs. So this is the part for when it's in the robot walker mode, the walking mode. Um, and then those two halves get glued together. Bond it together, it won't go because I saw support material in there, so it won't go all the way. But you get the idea. Um, and then finally, what will wrap up this page, step 47 is the nose for when it's in the fighter jet mode. So we have these pieces. We have these left and right pieces. They have gone through several cycles of filling and sanding and priming, and they go together like this. And of course the cockpit. See if I can move this without dumping all that stuff out of it. The cockpit. We'll go in here like that. Get that in view here. So the cockpit will go in like so. And of course the nose gear leg. Where did I put that? Right here. The nose gear leg goes to a bushing right there. Actually the other way. Right there. And it can go back. Now, one thing I'm really concerned about now is when that's all the way up, uh, is it going to hit? Let me just take these seats out. Take that out so they don't fall out. Is it going to hit that with the wheels on? So far, it's looking really close. Now, I can, I can cut out the bottom here, especially where the seat is. Because, you know, if it's cut out under the seat, you'll never see that. So I can give myself some more clearance there, but hopefully I won't have to too much. Um, that should be a pretty good tight fit right there, I'm hoping. Uh, the door... Alright, I have not sanded any of these doors yet, but um, we'll have one. That's the wrong one. Actually, I did have to trim them quite a bit. Uh, right... Right in here, I had to cut and trim that a bit to clear that section. Uh, so with that door in place, you'll have one of these pieces that holds it in. Come on. And that gets bonded on like that. And then that door, it needs more filling and more trimming. Not filling, but it needs more trimming. Maybe that's not the one for that side. Yeah, it was. Hmm. It needs more work, for sure. As you can see, I have not done much work on the doors at all yet. I thought I had one working, though. There we go. So that door opens, closes, just like that. So you're going to have to trim it around there. Looks like I actually cut. Yeah, this is one I was working on before. I actually cut into that material here to give that room to move this way, just like that. All right. The gaps are a little bigger than I wanted, but I'm not mad at it. It'll be fine. It's not 
not that terrible. I think it's going to be difficult to get the gaps completely out. Keep in mind, this is scaled three times bigger than the kit. So if on the kit you had a tiny little gap, you scale that up three times, you're going to get a big old gap. So when that's all the way down, I might add some material here just to close that hole up a little bit. I'm sure I have room to do that. So I'll probably glue in some styrene just to close up that hole. Same with here, especially. That, that hole's a little bit too big there for me. Um, so yeah, the doors still need a lot of work. Um, but I am slowly, oh, and that broke. I'll have to fix that. But I'm slowly getting this together. Um, so anyways, that's where I'm at. It's been forever since I've done a video uh, because I've just been working slow. Um, uh, it, it gets hot in the garage and I'm just not in the mood to do anything. And this has just been sitting here for several days, not even touching it. But I'm slowly getting there. I just wanted to put a video out just to let you guys know that I am working on it just slowly. I've got a lot of other projects I'm trying to get out the door. Out the door. Trying to get done. Um, when I get back to this, hopefully this will be done. And one... One point of doing all of this, um, if you're printing these parts from Thingiverse that I loaded and you're building it along with me, this is kind of like your guide on, on building it and putting it together. So this is more of, I guess, more of an instructional video just to kind of give you some things like how it goes together, any problems I've had printing parts, any changes I've made to the kit. Just so when you print your parts, you'll know, uh, you'll kind of know how they go together. Oh, and I forgot to show this part too, right here. This goes in like that. And that basically locks the nose gear in that. It's just like the mains. Actually, that's backwards. Like that. Just like the mains to lock the nose gear down. And it kind of clicks back and forth on, on that piece. So that's all that is. Um... So again, if you're building along with me, that's great. Um, but when I come back, hopefully we'll be done with that point. Um, the next page is kind of basically finishing the um, cockpit. And then we've got the canopy. I'm going to save that for the next video um, because I want to actually record because I'm going to try to form, I'm going to try to heat form a canopy. And uh, I want to actually record that. I haven't done it yet. I haven't tried it yet. Um, but I want to record that and kind of do it live with you so you can see how that goes. But uh, here you can kind of see how all that goes together. So next video, we hopefully will be up to this point. We'll be ready to form the canopy. And after that, it's just putting every all the pieces together. That's it. Well, any stupid bombs or whatever those are. Yeah, I'm still not looking forward to those. But uh, yeah, once we get this nose finished and that canopy done... We're pretty much there. So anyways, I'm going to leave it here because it's way too long. I've been talking way too much. Um, and be patient with me because I'm working slow. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.